Dear viewers, in this video we are going to learn about network topology. I am going to explain about what is the topology of a network and different types of topologies and the advantages and disadvantages of each topology. Come, let's get into what is a topology. Network topology means the way how the devices are connected to a network. That is the way in which the network is laid out. It may be either a physical connection or a logical connection. Network is based on two things. One is the device and the other is a link. A link is used to connect two or more devices and two or more links form a topology. It is a geometric representation of relationships between the links and the linking devices. We are going to learn about the five different basic topologies. Mesh, star, tree, bus and then ring. I said a topology is a geometric representation of relationships between links and the linking devices. Here two relationships are possible with topology namely peer to peer and primary secondary. In the case of peer to peer the linked devices will share the capacity of the link equally whereas in the case of primary secondary relationship the primary device will control the traffic of the link and the secondary devices will have transmission over the link. We can group our topologies into these two relationships. Ring and mesh are convenient for peer to peer. Star and tree are suitable for primary secondary relationship. Whereas the bus topology is suitable for both. I think now you are clear about the network topology and its types. With this brief introduction, we'll get into detail about different types of topologies and its advantages and disadvantages. Well, Mesh topology. This is the first one what we are going to see. In a mesh, every single device will have a dedicated point to point connection to every other devices in the network. Look at this diagram. It has got five devices. If you consider any particular device, it will have an individual direct connection with rest of the four devices. This is what meant dedicated point to point here. The dedicated link carries data only between those two devices alone. In a fully connected mesh, we'll have n into n minus 1 by 2 physical connections to connect n number of devices. It is an intolerable thing that to accommodate that many links, every device in mesh network must have n minus 1 IO ports, that is n minus 1 network ports. Okay, let's see what are the advantages and disadvantages of a mesh. The use of dedicated link guarantees the elimination of traffic problems, that is there will be no traffic during transmission. Failure of one link will not affect the transmission of the other, so mesh topology is a robust one. Since every message travels through a dedicated path, hence the transmission between the devices will be private and secure. Point to point link makes fault identification and fault isolation easy. On the other side we have got plenty of disadvantages also. The establishment of a mesh topology requires more cables and network IO ports. In a mesh, every device should be connected to every other devices. This makes installation and reconnection be very difficult. Since it uses bulky volumes of cable, it is very difficult to house it through walls or ceiling or floors. On a whole, it requires more cable and more number of IO ports. This makes a mesh topology an expensive one. These are the advantages and disadvantages of a mesh topology. Now we can see where it is used. That is, a mesh topology is used in the connection of telephone regional offices in which each regional office needs to be connected to every other regional office. Okay, star topology. This is the second one what we are going to see. Let's see what is a star topology. Look at the diagram. You may be wondering it doesn't resemble a star. That is why I said in the beginning itself a topology is either a physical or logical connection. Here in the case of star topology, every device will have a dedicated point to point connection with a hub which is said to be a central controller. Please recollect the connection of a mesh. There we had a dedicated point to point with all the devices whereas in a star, here we have a point to point only with the central controller that is either called as a hub. Suppose any device wants to send data to another, it has to send it first to the hub. In turn, the hub will send it to the intended device. Hence, the hub, the central controller acts as an exchange here in a star topology. This is how a star topology works. 
Now we shall see the advantages and disadvantages of a star. Now we shall see the advantages of a star topology. A star topology is less expensive than a mesh topology since it uses far less cabling than a mesh. In a star, each device requires only one link and only one I.O. port. This makes it easy to install and easy to reconfigure also. Since it uses less cabling, hence housing of cables is also less. If one link gets failed, only that link is affected. This makes the star topology robust and lends itself easy fault identification and easy isolation. Now we have a look into the disadvantages of a star topology. One big disadvantage of a star topology is the depending of the whole topology on one single point, the hub. If the hub goes down, the whole network will not work. The second one is, though it seems to be requiring less cable than a mesh, each device must be connected to a central hub. So more cabling is required in the case of star. These two are the major disadvantages of a star topology. You can question where a star topology is used. Yes, the answer is a LAN local area network what we use in our office. Tree topology is the third topology what we are going to see here. The tree topology is exactly a variation of star topology. Yes, it looks like a star but the difference is not every device plugs directly into the central hub. In a tree topology, majority of devices will connect to a secondary hub and the secondary hubs will connect to the central hub. Here, the central hub in the tree topology will be an active hub and the secondary hubs may either, ha either be active or passive hubs. A passive hub will be providing a simple physical connection with the attached devices. In simple, a hub which has got a number of devices and a number of hubs got connected is said to be an active hub. And a hub which has no connection of further hubs and extends its connection with the devices alone is said to be a passive hub. Normally, the active hubs are equipped with repeaters to strengthen and increase the distance of a signal can travel. In the case of a tree topology, the advantages and disadvantages remains the same as those of a star. But introduction of secondary hubs in a tree topology fetches two further advantages. It allows more number of devices connected to the network and increases the distance of a signal. Also it allows the network to prioritize and isolate the communications from different devices. The example of a tree topology will be a cable television network. The fourth one is bus topology. A bus topology is a multipoint one. Have a look at the diagram. Here one long cable that is a red cable acts as a backbone to link all the devices in the network. And the devices are connected to the backbone cable that is a bus cable by drop lines and taps. The drop lines are thin black in color running between the bus cable and the devices. A tap which is in yellow color makes the connection with the main cable either by splicing the cable or puncturing the sheathing of a cable to create contact with the main bus cable. The advantages of a bus topology includes easy to install and uses less cabling than the other topologies such as mesh, star or tree. Here the disadvantages of a bus topology will be outnumbering the advantages. In the case of failure of a link, fault isolation and reconfiguration is difficult. Since addition of new devices require modification or replacement of the backbone cable, this makes difficulty in adding new devices. There will be degradation in the quality of a signal due to reflection at the taps. But still it could be controlled by limiting the number of taps and spacing between the devices. A major disadvantage of a bus topology is a fault or break in the bus cable stops the entire transmission of a network. Ring topology is the fifth and the final one we are going to see. Here in a ring topology every device will have a dedicated point to point connection with only the two devices on either side of it. A signal is passed along the ring in one direction from a device to device until the 
signal reaches its destination this is a major disadvantage of a ring in a ring each device is incorporated with a repeater a repeater in each device regenerates the bits and passes them along until it reaches the intended device if a particular device does not receive a signal within a specific period it will alert the network operator with an alarm about the problem and its location now we shall see the advantages and disadvantages of a ring topology uh, in the advantages side a ring is easy to install and reconfigure since each device is linked only to its uh, immediate neighbors to add or delete a device requires changing of only two connections in the case of ring fault isolation is very simple in the disadvantage side as i said earlier the unidirectional traffic is the foremost one and the other is a break in the ring can disable the entire network and this can be solved by having a dual ring that's all we was we have covered all the topologies as listed in the beginning of the video now we shall uh, see one more topology in the, in the next slide that is a hybrid topology actually this hybrid topology is not uh, in our list uh, it is a combination of several topologies as a sub network uh, in a large network larger network uh, we can understand it from the diagram uh, given here it has a star bus and a ring in its network that forms a hybrid topology thank you viewers for your patient listening hope you have learnt about uh, network topologies and its types i will catch you up in another video with a different topic thank you